All right. Good morning, Latham family. If you guys will join us, stand with us. We'll get started on some worship. Uh, yeah, I had an interesting thing happen to me this morning. My car broke down on the way to church this morning, so we got everything running a little bit late, but we'll get it going.
Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship today. It's great to see uh, each and every one of you here on a beautiful Sunday morning. I uh, also want to welcome those that are worshiping with us on Facebook Live. Uh, we're thankful that you can be a part of this worship service. And uh, please remember to check in with us in the comment section. Uh, let us know how many folks in your home are worshiping. And uh, if you have praises or prayer concerns, uh, you can share those with us in that same comment section. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, uh, I want to say a special welcome to you. Uh, there is an insert in your bulletin, uh, a little information we would love to get from you so we can share other information about our church with you. Uh, if you'd fill that out, uh, drop it in one of the baskets as you're leaving today. Uh, remind everybody of those baskets. Uh, uh, they're there for you to share prayer concerns, also a place to uh, leave your tithes and offerings. Uh, but uh, for your visitors, pray that you're blessed by your worship experience and hope that you'll come and worship with us again soon. Uh, I have just a couple things uh, that I want to mention in the way of announcements. Uh, the first is something that I talked about last week, uh, and that is our new website. Uh, we received some great feedback from some folks this week. Uh, that feedback has already made a difference in the website, and we're going to see a picture of it in a minute, I think. Uh, but it's had an impact on the, the homepage image uh, that we're sharing, uh, and it's going to continue to be a work in progress. So uh, for those of you who weren't here last week that didn't hear me talk about it, please get online. Please check our uh, new website out. Play with it. Use it. Let us know what you think about it uh, because your feedback will make a difference. Uh, and we will continue to revise it and refine it uh, based on that feedback. I also want to mention something that there's a, a great write-up about this in the bulletin today. Uh, Samantha Henderson, uh, our children's minister, as well as our director of communications, she is going to be doing a, I'm going to call it a technology training, uh, on uh, uh, February 23rd, 10 a.m. here in Farley Hall. Uh, for those of you who are maybe struggling with our Shelby app, uh, or struggling to make your way through our new website, uh, or you got any kind of technology struggle, uh, Samantha is great at that stuff. Uh, if you'd bring your device that you use with you, uh, come out that day. Uh, she will hopefully be able to help you work through, navigate through those uh, uh, issues that maybe you've been struggling with with technology. Uh, last thing I want to mention is we have uh, another prayer quilt uh, that is out in the Welcome Center today uh, that is given for Gene Wells. Uh, please remember after this worship service to go by, uh, tie a knot in that prayer quilt, and uh, say a prayer for Gene. Good morning. As we uh, continue to uh, worship God uh, this morning through our prayers, uh, are there any prayer concerns and or praises out there that you might have? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Yes, thank you for that, and thank you for those uh, online. We do hear what you have to say, and uh, you are an intricate part of our worship as well, so continue to do that. Uh, as we do, uh, remember uh, Jim Gillespie uh, <clears throat> and uh, Gene Wells, uh, his cancer has returned and is receiving treatment again, and continue for Sandy and uh, her healing, and she's here, and thank God for that. <clears throat> Well, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we uh, thank you for this morning. And God, <clears throat> I know uh, sometimes we get busy. Lord, sometimes things just come at us that uh, are unexpected. So God, I just pray just right now in the name of Jesus, regardless of where each and every one of us are at, God, you know. God, you know each and every one of us. You have the hairs on our heads numbered. God, that last night while we were sleeping, that our names were on your tongue and, and our names and who we are were in your thoughts. 
God, that's just the intimate relationship that you so desire to have with us. So God, I just pray just right now that wherever we're at, that we would just take a moment, just Holy Spirit, just come and fall on us. God, remind us who you are. God, remind us of whose we are. Lord, we continue to pray for healing. Lord, we lift up our nation. Lord, we pray for our neighbors and for those who may not know who you are. God, I pray that you would just come and minister to us today. God, draw us close to you. God, as that song says, may we walk in freedom. For you are a miracle maker. Help us now just to praise you regardless of where we're at. For you are worthy. For you are our God. We ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. All right, family, if you guys will stand with us again. still I'm held by this one thing and somehow still I'm held by this one thing yes Jesus loves me even me and even me choices that I made when I have wandered when I have pushed away somehow still I'm held by this one thing somehow still I'm held by this one thing yes Jesus love Jeez.
is extravagant Your friendship It is intimate And your love
Amazing love and I know it's true It's my joy and honor you All I do I honor you And you are my king Jesus Forgiven because you were forsaken, and I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. Amazing love for oh, how. You, my king, would die for me. Amazing love, and I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. All I do, I honor you. In all I do, I honor you. In all I do, I honor you. Thanks to our praise team for uh, doing a beautiful job. I want to thank Tyler and Grant as well. They are uh, important parts of uh, this worship team that uh, makes this service uh, what it is uh, every Sunday morning. And I am uh, very grateful to all of them. I wonder, uh, I'm going to start out with a question. Uh, how many of you watch The Crown on Netflix? Uh, I, I hope uh, uh, many of you do. Uh, this will make more sense to you if, uh, if you have watched it. Uh, if you have not, uh, it is a historical drama uh, about the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, there have been uh, four seasons so far. Another season is coming out uh, uh, at some point this year. But uh, the, the first season... Uh, aired back in 2016. Uh, and during that first season, there was an episode that was focused on the end of Winston Churchill's time as prime minister. Uh, and to mark the occasion of his 80th birthday, uh, the British government commissioned an artist named Graham Sutherland to paint a portrait of Churchill. Uh, and in this same episode, there was uh, a lot of attention given to the process that this artist went through to uh, capture Churchill at that point in his life. Uh, but you also see that Churchill was very unhappy with the artist's approach. Uh, he wanted to be portrayed as the strong and confident leader that he had once been, uh, not the frail elder statesman that he had become. Uh, but the artist, he refused to compromise. And so this was the result of his efforts. When uh, that portrait was first publicly unveiled, uh, Winston Churchill jokingly referred to it as a, a great work of modern art. Uh, but the truth was, privately, he absolutely hated it. Uh, and he was so vain, he was so insecure about the way that he wanted that painting to portray him that his wife Clementine ultimately had the painting destroyed. Uh, they broke it into many pieces and they burned what was left. Uh, all because 
Winston Churchill could not accept himself as he was. Now, Churchill's response to his painting was very, very different from the response of another one of England's great leaders, uh, a man by the name of Oliver Cromwell, who was an important figure in the 17th century, uh, both as a, a military leader and as a statesman. Uh, and the artist way back then who was commissioned to paint his portrait was an artist who was known to flatter the person that they were painting. Uh, this artist tried to hide their imperfections and overlook their flaws. Uh, but Oliver Cromwell was rumored to have told this artist, paint me just like I am, warts and all. And so that's what the artist did, and that was the result of his work. Now, I promise you, you have not stumbled into an art history lecture this morning. Uh, uh, there is a sermon in here somewhere, if I can find it. Uh, last week, uh, we started this sermon series off by talking about how God loves us. Uh, and he loves us not for anything that we do, but he loves us for who we are. And I also said last week that God loves us unconditionally. Uh, he loves us no matter what. Uh, but sometimes, for a number of different reasons, I think we struggle to believe that God can love us like that. Uh, we mistakenly think that our warts get in the way. Uh, and when I say warts, I'm talking about our past and our mistakes, our imperfections, our brokenness, our sins. And we imagine that those warts somehow make us unlovable. We think that if somebody really knew about all the things we had done, if they knew who we were on the inside, if they knew the thoughts that run through our heads sometimes, then they could never love us. And we wrongly assume that God thinks in that same sort of way. But he doesn't. I absolutely believe that God loves us warts and all. Uh, and that's what I want us to think together about today. And one of my homiletics professors when I was in seminary uh, would assign us different passages of Scripture to prepare the sermons that we would preach in his class on. Uh, and I can well remember the first passage that he assigned to me in his class. It was uh, a passage from uh, Judges chapter 11. Uh, and at that point, I wasn't very familiar with uh, Judges chapter 11. Uh, it was about this guy named Jephthah. Uh, and I want to share with you how that passage began. This is Judges 11, beginning in verse 1. Hear God's word. Now, Jephthah of Gilead was a great warrior. He was the son of Gilead, but his mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also had several sons, and when these half-brothers grew up, they chased Jephthah off the land. You will not get any of our father's inheritance, they said, for you are the son of a prostitute. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Soon he had a band of worthless rebels following him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I first read that passage uh, for uh, that assignment I had in that class, what struck me about those words were something that I found in verse 1. And again, it said, Jephthah of Gilead was a great warrior. He was the son of Gilead. But his mother was a prostitute. And I guess what I was struck by was this stark contrast. He was a great warrior, but his mother was a prostitute. And when I read that, I, I tried to put myself in Jephthah's position. I tried to imagine how tough that must have been for him. 
I mean, there must have been lots of shame, lots of embarrassment connected with his family background. It was a a wart on Jephthah's life. But it wasn't his fault. He hadn't asked for it. He hadn't done anything wrong. But he was forced to live with the consequences. And warts like that can make you believe that there's something wrong with you. Henry Nowen wrote a, uh, a great book that's entitled Life of the Beloved. Uh, and in that book, he talks about how sometimes it is hard for us to hear God's voice calling us his beloved. Uh, and the reason that it's hard to hear God's voice sometimes is because uh, in this fallen world that we live in, there are voices that are constantly shouting at us and saying things like this. You're no good. You're ugly. You're worthless. You're despicable. You're a nobody. Now, as I think about Jephthah's story, I have to imagine that he heard voices like that sometimes. Uh, And that must have been really hard. Now, our lives may not have been marked in the same way that Jephthah's was. But some of us have had to deal with warts in our own life that are probably much like his. Things from our past that that weren't our fault. Things that left a, a mark on our lives. Some of us carry scars around with us from the broken situations that we've had to live through. And maybe somewhere along the way, we started believing some of those voices that Henry Nowen was talking about. Somewhere along the way, we became convinced that we were no good, that we were worthless, and that nobody could ever love us. Even God. Now, if that's something that you have ever struggled with in your own life, I hope and pray that you would hear me say this. If you don't hear me say anything else today, there is nothing from your past. There is nothing that has ever been done to you that can keep God from loving you just like you are. Now, there's another sort of wart that I want us to think about, a wart that frequently marks our lives. Uh, And these warts are really all about our sins. And there are all sorts of sins. All kinds of things that we can do, bad choices that we can make that have the effect of separating us from God. And again, we can sometimes convince ourselves with a a little help from Satan that whatever it is that we have done, it is so bad that God could never forgive us uh, and that he could never love us because of it. And I want to explore that idea just a little bit by looking at another passage of Scripture from John's Gospel, uh, John chapter 8. And this is a story that you probably know well. The story of a a woman uh, who was caught in the act of adultery. Uh, And this woman in this story was absolutely guilty of what the Pharisees are saying that she had done. And the Pharisees brought this woman to Jesus because they were trying to trap him. Uh, The law of Moses said that what she had done meant that she needed to be stoned. And the Pharisees were demanding that Jesus give them an answer about what needed to happen to her. Uh, But Jesus knew what their motives were. He knew what they were trying to do. And so this is what Jesus said. Well, if you have never sinned, go ahead and stone her. And his words obviously had the desired effect because One by one, these men began to drop those stones that they were carrying, and they walk away. And when they were gone, Jesus starts talking directly to this woman. And this is what he said. 
Where'd they go? Did nobody condemn you? Well, then I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Now, again, this woman was guilty. Just like the Pharisees said. She had been caught red-handed in the act of adultery. And this sin was certainly a wart that would mark her life. A wart that the Pharisees thought should result in her being stoned to death. But that is clearly not what Jesus thought. And in that moment, he didn't try to shame her for her sin. He didn't try to interrogate her to understand what had led her to make this awful choice. He didn't even use her as an example to try and teach the other people who were still there about the consequences of sin. Because you see, Jesus didn't focus on her sin. Jesus focused on her. And I believe that he loved her warts and all. And even though he refused to condemn her, that that didn't mean that her sin didn't matter. Because ultimately Jesus said, go and sin no more. But I think Jesus knew that what she needed in that moment to turn her life in a new direction wasn't to be shamed and embarrassed over what she had done. But what she needed to experience in that moment was his loving grace. And that's what he gave her. Now one last example that I want to share with you. Uh, comes from the life of Saul of Tarsus, uh, the man who obviously became the Apostle Paul. Uh, He was somebody who carried a a sack full of warts around with him all the time. He had been a a devout Pharisee. He he had done a a lot of awful things in his life, uh, things that could have easily convinced him that uh, God could never love him. But all of that changed for Saul when he had this amazing encounter with Christ. And not only was Paul's life transformed in that moment, but I think his understanding uh, about God's love was also transformed in that moment. I want you to listen to Paul's words from Romans chapter 8. I want to invite the praise team to go ahead and come back. Paul wrote in Romans 8, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Paul made it clear. He said nothing, that nothing in all creation will ever, ever be able to separate us from God's love. Not those warts from our past that have marked many of our lives. Not those warts that we brought on ourselves because of the bad choices and the sinful mistakes that we've made. Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Now, Winston Churchill may have vainly struggled to accept himself the way that he was. But thankfully for all of us, that's not how God loves us. He loves us just like we are. He loves us unconditionally. He loves us no matter what. He loves us warts and all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I definitely needed that this morning. (laughs) All right, you guys, if you'll stand with us again. He knows my thoughts, the things that no one sees. He knows my heart. In every broken piece, somehow still I'm 
held by this one thing And somehow still I'm held by this one thing Yes, Jesus loves me Even me Even me choices that I've made when I have wandered when I have pushed away somehow still I'm held by this one thing and somehow still I'm held by this one thing yes Jesus benediction. I encourage you to hang out, uh, have some coffee, uh, and fellowship with each other. Uh, receive this benediction. Uh, loving God, uh, as we just sang, uh, Lord, we thank you that uh, in Jesus uh, you have shown the world what your love is. Uh, we thank you that you pour your love out into our life.